Hello and welcome to Hack 5. It's your weekly dose of Technolust. I'm Darren Kitchen. And I'm Sebastian Kidham. Hey, Seb, man. It's so good to see you. Good to see you too, Darren. It's, it's yeah. nice to be able to do, a, to do one of these, you know, over the pond. Right? It's been too long since we've done a Let's Code. I'm glad that we can just do it as the main event because I'm really excited. I sent you a text and you know how much I love NGREP. I used it on the Wi-Fi Pineapple Mark III, which kind of like roped you into this whole mess. <laughs> Absolutely. You can see the regret in Seb's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. But, but NGREP, if, if for everybody that isn't familiar, is just like the grep command for Linux, except with the N standing for network, which means that you can do all sorts of cool conditions based on what you see online. Uh, so what we're going to do today is build a payload for this here packet squirrel that's going to use NGREP to save interesting traffic, but we could also do so much other cool stuff with it based on whatever conditions we see. That's kind of the, the power of it. It's kind of brilliant. What do you say we just dive right in, uh, Seb? I'm excited. I've got my packet squirrel here plugged in in arming mode. You can tell it's blinking blue. And uh, I've got it plugged in with a nice little uh, USB drive so I can store some logs. And uh, just so that we establish the geometry, I have it connected to both my computer here as well as my victim machine. Uh, here, this is just a laptop that will play the victim on the LAN uh, for the demo, uh, which will allow me to just go ahead in this, the way that I, I love to do it every time, is to proof of concept at first. Make sure it works before you even start writing a payload. Right, Seb? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just before, how are you connecting everything together? Uh, just, just Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is a fun little thing about the, the uh, packet squirrel is, so this dark line right here is going to the rest of the network. And then this lighter cable here is not, it is, would typically be going just to the target computer. But in this case, since I want to screen share with you and I want to, you know, use this computer to uh, build the attack and then this computer to demo the man in the middle, I actually have it going to both. And you can do that just like you would with any other network. I mean, it's, it's just a network, right? So, da da da. It's a switch. <laughs> I know. I know. It's a, it's a tiny little bucket switch. I'd show you that it's the size of a credit card by putting my credit card in, on top of it and then showing you, but it, that's probably a bad idea. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Shall we? Shall we get into it? Yeah, so I am already uh, SSH'd into my packet squirrel. You can see here on my computer, and I've already cleared out this payload because um, we're going to be doing that here in a moment. But uh, we're already established that we have the internet traffic for these two computers flowing he through here. So if I were to just run ngrep with nothing, whoa, okay, I'm going to stop that already because I already received, as you can see, a ton of packets. Uh, so right. while it's really cool that you can literally see every Everything. I'm not interested in, in, in everything. I'm only interested in certain things. And what's really cool about NGREP is it very similar to, uh, for instance, uh, TCP dump has filtering capabilities. And one really cool filtering capability is that you can use regular expressions. So just to let you know, there's like, a, just like grep, it has a lot of possibilities for how granular you can filter in. Uh, so in this particular demo, I'm going to say I'm only interested in, we're going to choose FTP. And you know why I'm choosing FTP, Seb? Because you've been on that land. I'm sure you have. You, you know, Absolutely. the company has the policy where it's like, uh, Sorry, no, the, the amount of times that you see unencrypted traffic in an internal network is astonishing. I mean, y internal doesn't mean safe, right? Yeah, well, I mean, so much an emphasis is put on like, oh, well, we obviously wouldn't use FTP between our two branch offices because that would transit the internet and that's unsafe. But internally... <laughs> <laughs> right, you've got to expose internally, but then, you know, VPN to the, to the other network to get to your FTP there, which is, again, encrypted. I mean, it, it's better than nothing, but it still means on the land there's all sorts of problems. And it's not even just FTP. I've seen this with Telnet being used in medical equipment. I've used, I've seen this in like, uh, I don't even want to mention the kind of stuff that we saw at the banks in Lebanon. But uh, there's all sorts of crazy uh, things. Printers. Um, uh, yeah, we're yeah. going to have a lot of fun with printers. Thermal uh, control systems, stuff like that. Yeah, it's good fun. Yeah. 
I, I, in fact, it's the same reason why, and Seb, you know this, because you segmented the Hack5 network here at the warehouse for this very reason. We're beholden to certain pieces of equipment that we must use as part of you know, our, our fulfillment process and such. And there's kind of no two ways about it. So you do the best you can by segmenting those and at least only having the nodes that you have. But uh, if you can be one of those nodes in the middle, all bets are off. So we're Absolutely. going to show you how uh, you can just quickly demo like what's possible with ngrep. So let me switch back over here to my SSH session. And I'm just going to run ngrep with dash WIQL, which says the W is for, uh, it allows me to pass the words that I want to filter basically instead of using regular expression. I is for case insensitive. R, or sorry, not R. Yeah, you don't want to R. I don't want R. I want Q for quiet and L for line feed. And what we're going to use, what we're going to look for is going to be in here. We're going to look for the word user or the word pass. And then where are we going to look for that? Well, anything only on port 21. I mean, similarly, you could also do port, was it 110 was it IMAP? Or was that pop three? Uh, Man. Uh, God, I don't remember. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure somebody out there right now remembers. But yeah, so we're going to only look for those. And so we can see that that's looking right there. So while yeah. that's going on this machine here, I'm just going to go ahead and FTP over to an internal resource and log in and type in my password. And you can see in real time, the user was passed and the password was passed in plain text. And at that point, I can go ahead and close that FTP session. And I would say that right there is the gist of, um, of just prototyping it. The last thing I would do is actually just output it to log file, right? I would just run that again and do it again. Darren as the username, lame password as the password as always. And then I can hit control C, pat that log file and see, there you go. So we know that we can just redirect the standard output from this into a log file, which makes us now assume like, hey, okay, we could probably just turn this into a packet squirrel payload, which does basically that, and then saves the logs over to the USB drive so we can plant this on the LAN at the beginning of our engagement, then later on down the road as the pen tester, we can come by and say, hey, what kind of loot did we get, right? Right, absolutely. So how do you wanna get started? Uh, well, now that we've uh, proof of concept did that, I think we should establish that you could literally just put those two, you know, lines or that one liner uh, into a file. I mean, like literally, I could say nano payload.sh, do a shebang slash bin slash bash, run that ngrep command, that WIQL, uh, you know, user or pass on port 21 and pipe that to, we'll do waka waka so you can run it multiple times and append to a file on MNT, which is the USB uh, flash drive, loot, which is typically where we save stuff. And then, I don't know, port 21 stuff.txt, right? And that would literally be a payload. We could pretend that with, well, we would need to give it an attack, or a, sorry, not an attack You'd mode. You'd have to give it a net mode, otherwise there's no networking setup at all. So if the first thing you do is net mode, and then this kind of lends itself very well to using net mode transparent, because there's no need for the uh, the squirrel to have a um, an IP address from either the host or give an IP address out to the client. It can just sit as the transparent man in the middle. Which is kind of nice because it means that as opposed to doing net mode mat where the packet squirrel will get an IP address from the network and then give its client an IP address from itself in the 172.16.32 range. This way, right. if I do transparent, it is literally transparent. Uh, best practices typically is to do a LED setup, you know, let it do that. Um, we found out in in this particular payload, it might help to give it a few seconds to sleep before it goes and does anything else, just so that everybody on the LAN kind of gets their IPs from DHCP. Yeah, the, net the, the network stack is supposed to settle so that we don't start, you know, uh, listening on an interface that's being brought up and down, and Grep doesn't really like that. Yeah, and then the, the next bit would just be to do LED attack. Whoops, H-T-A-C-K, and then I'd put an ampersand at the end of this so that it kind of runs in the background, but that's pretty much it. That's Is that not a payload, Seb? 
Uh, yeah, you can you can call that a payload. I think we can we can do a bit better because uh, there's no um, you're not checking if the USB disk even exists, right? So that's that's a problem. Um, you're also running it with LEDs going, and uh, yeah, there's a couple of improvements. There's no way to tell if we've been successful or or have you know received uh, any type of output, and um, and so on. So there's a, there's a couple of things that we can do. We should also make sure that depending on which file system you use on the USB disk, that you're we're constantly syncing or syncing every few seconds the drive. Now that can be unnecessarily uh, can be unnecessary, but we found that it does help if the device crashes because the power has been cut or similar, which might as well happen in some network closets. Um, okay. So what you're saying is this would work, but it's not robust. Right, it's not robust and it's it's hard coded. So we should we should definitely write something something a bit more uh, flexible and uh, more okay. like a payload. So I am assuming right. at this point you're going to now open Gedit. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back into my Sublime because that's my editor of choice here. And um, the first thing that we want to start off with is to check if we've got. Um, if we've got uh, USB storage, right? If we've got that mount. And the way that we do that, we can just check mount for the file, um, for this file, if that file exists. And if that file uh, doesn't, uh, sorry, if that file, um, oh, what am I saying? If that file exists, we actually wanna say if that file doesn't exist, right? So if that file doesn't exist, we know that we have something mounted to, uh, or, or slash MNT path. So that means uh, we uh, now want to do something like um, uh, we want to uh, create the loot directory, right? That loot directory might not exist. So uh, uh, we want to set up the net, net mode. Um, and then we want to run the ngrep command, right? Uh, we might also want to to sync in between. So so let's let's just have this as comments now. If next thing I'll do quickly is just to to report if there's a, if no mount is available, right? Uh, if we don't have anything mounted, then we want to do lead fail. And just uh, finish the payload. This way, there's no point in having it going. Um, right. So I think the first thing we should do is we should uh, define a couple wow, of functions. So that's a. I was about to say that's kind of a lot of things that we're going to be doing there. So. Right. We don't want to. We don't. We don't want to clutter everything, right? So there's no 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 reason to clutter everything. We can we can draw this out a little nicer. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a setup function, and the setup function is. Uh, oh, we've already the, established. Uh, we want to just like set the LED to setup, and then set the networking mode, right? And then give it a few seconds to kind of chill out. Right. Correct. Yeah. So uh, so first thing here, net mode transparent. Right, uh, and then we put a sleep, let's say five in there. But something else that we want to do is now we were when we were talking about this earlier, we said we wanted to make this payload uh, kind of more covert, right? Because something that's constantly blinking in LEDs maybe not the best uh, um, thing to have set up, right? So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the LED first. So we're just going to start this uh, LED setup with. Uh, oh, so it makes it just a little bit more covert, yeah. Right, so let's do LED uh, off. And I'll just turn the LED off, and uh, then net mode transparent, and we sleep five. So instead of doing like this here, we'll just now we can just run setup. setup. Right, cool. So um, once that's time, successful, it'll go to the next. Yeah, exactly. But but uh, we should we should still consider that we don't have a loot directory yet, right? And we need to create a sync function. So the sync function. Um, should be relatively simple. So here, uh, all we do is we have a while true, uh, do uh, sync. So the sync, sync command sync. synchronizes right. the file system. And maybe I'll speak to w why that's important and you can uh, correct me here. But essentially, when we, um, when we decided to, um, when we decided to, to develop this, we had a kind of a, uh, a large problem to overcome in that the the typical USB drives that you'll find off the shelf come pre-formatted with a really ancient file system, FAT32, which has a right. lot of inherent problems when it comes to using them with little Linux boxes. Uh, and we want to make it at the same time user friendly for anybody working with it on the Linux or uh, sorry, on the Windows platform. So it's why we've decided to focus on two file systems. One is ext4, and that's your typical Linux file system. Uh, 
and that works great with Linux, obviously, as one would expect. But the other is NTFS. Why did we choose NTFS, Seb? So um, the, the the reason why we chose NTFS over over FAT32 is that uh, well the file size limitation one so we can't store a file larger than four gigs also it's an archaic system so anyway uh, we could have used something like XFAT but there's driver issues there and so we just decided to use NTFS which doesn't have those limitations and X4 uh, so those are the two supported systems that we allow you to use on a USB disk and if you don't if you want to use X4 but you can't or you're not sure how to format it best then you can just use uh, reformat underscore USB on uh, your packet scroll. Just type that command in and confirm, and it'll automatically wipe your stick and format it correctly. Yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah. All right. So now that we. Um, all right, there you go. So you would just hit Y ahead. on this, and uh, it's just going to take a few seconds, and then it'll. Haha. And now I have a flash drive that's formatted EXT4. Easy oh, enough. Yeah. Exactly. So um, back to the payload, though. Uh, we we have established the um, we have established the the, the you know the, the fact. So first of all, we're we're gonna create the setup. Now in the setup function, what we could actually do though is um, also create the loot folder. So oh yeah, uh, that makes sense. So let's that, call it something. Sense. So typically and we have different payloads storing things in a loot folder on the USB drive. So slash MNT right. slash loot slash, in this case, I guess it would be ngrep. Right, so, so what I would actually do at the very top here, just so that we you know, have this a bit cleaner, um, Let's have something like this, or log deer, um, loot deer, maybe. Yeah. And our loot deer is supposed to be MNT uh, loot and then uh, ingrep. Right. Sounds good. So this is our loot deer. And then, or uh, we, because we want to have a log where we're actually storing that loot, right? So, so that the, the log will be the loot. So that's going to be log uh, file is, um, and that would just be the, uh, loot deer, sorry, loot deer, um, slash, uh, what do we call it, ngrep, dash. And now this is kind of a... Wouldn't you just make it ngrep.log? Well, I could do ngrep.log, but the problem is that when the packet scroll starts up, right, it'll overwrite those files and we don't want that. And we can't use reliably use the timestamp because the packet scroll obviously doesn't have a real-time clock. So uh, it'll just reset the time to whatever it knows uh, uh, is the well, closest it does that by analyzing the file, uh, like the last right. updated time of a file, yeah. Or it uh, could so anyway. get it from NTP, but it's not gonna do that in net mode transparent, so. Right, exactly, yeah. So so for that reason, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, gonna have this right here, so ngrep random.log. This means it doesn't get a timestamp, it just gets a random number, but this will help the file at least not getting overwritten. So you could do something else, you could name this, you could put a timestamp in here, whatever you want to do, or change the name of it. But so anyway, so we've got the loot here, and we have the, uh, the log files, so we know um, we could just do make deer dash p loot deer and then our loot deer is created too. So just just making sure that that's all set up. Okay, so so we can do the setup. Uh, then we want to sync it. Uh, we want to make sure the file system is being synced every five seconds. We can just background that by adding the ampersand to the end. Um, so now that we've done that, it's it's time to uh, to oh, run. Now we can actual. actually do all the all the running. Yeah. Right, yeah, so now we can run the ngrep command. And uh, that's as simple as doing, what was it? What were the uh, commands that you had earlier? Uh, dash W I Q L, and then yeah. in single tick, user pipe pass, single tick, uh, port 21. Like this? Uh, yeah, now that's just one though, uh, Seb. I've actually used a number of these ngrep uh, commands over the years. Uh, there's some fantastic ones for pulling out like social security numbers, credit card numbers, all sorts of you know sensitive information, which on a pen test would be you know a, a really great thing to have in your final report. So we shouldn't hard code this as just the. I don't want to have to have like ten different ngrep payloads for all the different I, possible things that you can pull out of the wire. I totally agree. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have this ngrep options here, and um, we're just going to put an array here, and in it we're just going to give it user pass, and then port 
21. We'll do that. Um, what that's going to do is uh, by having this as an array, uh, actually, and I didn't do this right. We also need WIQL. Yeah, for dash WIQL. So we want to have all these, these options set. So once we have these options, the way that we can call them, instead of doing all of this mess, we could just add these uh, the double quotes, and then we'll do uh, in grep options. But it's an array. Will then so call the, the array. Yeah. So all of the elements so, of the array. Yeah. So so this part basically just splits it out into these uh, into the individual arguments, and we're adding these quotes around it so that when we have something here that's got a space in it, for example, if you wanted mm. to do this, it's going to pass that as a single argument, especially useful for this part here. Um, so anyway, that's why we that's why we have it quoted. Um, and now that gets piped out to the log file. Now, just to be safe, because when we were playing around with this, um, two ampersand greater than one, two ampersand greater or than two, one. Sorry, two, two greater, greater than ampersand, ampersand one. one. There we go. Yeah, yeah. So, so we just want to make sure to redirect standard out and error. No, it, what we were doing is we we're redirecting standard error into standard out, and then we're just redirecting that into the log file. Um, and, and so we'll that's, that in the background. And we want to run that in the background, absolutely. Yeah, we can do that with the just the uh, the ampersand at the end. So uh, the the thing here is now um, we, we may want to kill ngrep. So let's be let's be uh, well, good we about this. Well, we just want to kill all ngrep, right? That's no, we actually want to we actually want to grab its no, we actually want to grab its pid, and we do that by uh, by running this uh, or by, by just calling this in bash. It's just um, dollar dollar sign exclamation mark, and that'll get the pid of the last executed command. So now we have okay. that pid for. Whereas if we were to run kill all ngrep, it would kill every instance of ngrep that we're running. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So um, so now that we've done that. Um, so there we go. The, I mean, we now have a portable version of this payload. Right. right? We have it. I mean, you just well, need to put the run function, you know, or down there and call it a day. Yeah, yeah. So, so theoretically, this this is this will already run, right? So we have a setup which is taking care of the setup. We have uh, syncing happening, and we have ngrep happening. But there's no way we're not getting any feedback yet, right? So right now we're just logging to a file, a random file every time. We're not killing ngrep at any time. So, so we want to do something, right? Um, so what do we, how do we want to be informed that uh, a payload is, uh, or that we have loot? Do you want to? Yeah, so I figure, you know, the, the use case here would be that as the pen tester, I'm going to go ahead and like plant this at the client site on Monday. And then, you know, come Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm going to come by. And you're right. I don't want to have to like unplug it, put an Ethernet, you know, or pull the flash drive, check to see if I've got any loot in the file, and then put it back in and set it all up again. It would be nice if I could just glance at it. But again, we want to maintain that stealth because you did the LED off at the beginning so that it's not blinking anything. So it's yeah. so part of me would be, want to say, hey, if it finds loot, turn green. And if it hasn't gotten the loot yet, stay off or turn red. But that doesn't make much sense. No, because then you've got to cover it. So, so button? Button. Okay. Press the All button. right, so, so that's good because that introduces the button command, right? And so the button command works this way. We can call button, and uh, the button command will just uh, uh, hold the system. Sorry, uh, now that we're showing the screen. So the button command is just going to uh, wait and not execute anything. It's just going to stay like this until the button is pressed, right? But it will link a certain LED pattern. So what we do instead is we do no LED equals true in front of it, which is just an environment variable to the button. And um, this means that uh, the button will not interfere with the LED pattern. So it won't turn on LED, it'll just wait silently. Cool, so it's just so gonna now, sit there until we press the button. Do we, uh, let's add some logic to that though. Yeah, so, so uh, while we don't have to necessarily do this ampersand ampersand, I'm gonna do it anyway, just because it looks neater this way. So when the button is pressed, uh, this part of the code will run, right? Right, and, and amp amp is saying probably, when it's successful. Right, and we actually want to do this. Um, we want to take this code and we want to put it into this while loop. And the reason why we want to do that is because if you press this button, right, we want to keep allowing you to press this button and keep allowing mm -hmm. you to press this button, right? So the way we'll we'll do that is um, just keep it in this in this while loop, 
So this will be unlimited. And now if the button is pressed, we want to check if, uh, if the log contains passwords, right? Well, yeah, I mean, that's what we're looking for is user and pass. And as you saw when I did the, uh, the proof of concept, it was, well, it was all caps user. Right. So instead, what we can do is we can create a check log function. I'm just going to return one for now. Um, oh, great. So when you press the button, it'll just check the log. And correct. based on the output so of that, give us the LED. Uh, we'll use green and red. Right. So what we can do here is we can call this check log function and then just inside here, uh, say, put, put anything we want, right? So, so, um, when the log, when we find what we have in our log, what do you want to do? You want to blink an led maybe? Yeah. So led finish is an awesome led pattern that, uh, blinks green. It's very exciting. It lets you know, Hey, something good is happening. And at that point yeah. we are pretty much done with our pen test cause we've made off with loot. So let's go write a nice report and get paid. Right. Right. So, so how about this though, um, to make sure that everything is safe and that we can, you know, that we don't lose any data, right. Let's clean up because when we're, when you hit that button and it's collected, uh, payloads, we, for now, anyway, we don't want to let it keep running. Right. Yeah, that, that would be bad. You, you know, I mean, I guess I can see a use case where you would want to, you know, just like, hey, get some more loot. But so I think at this a, point, we, we can add a variable. We can add a variable there that would allow us to to choose that as an option. But for now, let's say we want to finish, right? So yeah, so um, let's clean it up. Um, we're just gonna we're just gonna. Uh, well, let's kill let's off wait for three um, seconds. Okay. Yeah. The, the reason, let's, off, let's uh, wait for three seconds. To, yeah, absolutely. But let's, let's wait uh, for the led finish command because it blinks a certain pattern. We only need sure. that for about three seconds to, to happen. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to run kill and then and PID, which is the PID that we got from ngrep. So we can just uh -huh. kill ngrep and um, then we're, we're pretty much done. So uh, we want to do lead what off. About we could just go ahead and, uh, yeah, because otherwise it's going to stay green. And then that halt command down there, that's a fun one. That actually is basically power yeah. off. Yeah, well, yeah, right. Because this is an embedded device. So there's no way to actually power it off. But what we can do is we can halt the entire operating system. And so the halt command will do just that. But the reason why we do the lead off in the, in the, uh, before that is because otherwise it'll actually still be blinking something else and it'll keep that LED powered on because there's no operating system to tell it to power it off, right? Because it's just... The electrical component being turned on at that moment. So, so at this, this point, then you you've you've basically got a payload here where if you press the button, it's going to turn green if it has loot, and if you and if it doesn't have loot, it's not going to do anything. Correct. Yeah. But so we kind of want to tell you that there's no loot because otherwise you might think that the device is broken or no power is going to it, right? So we can just do lead uh, fail here and. Um, and then sleep for a second and then turn it back off because we do sleep want it to go break. back to its covert, you know, yeah. LED off mode. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, cool. so now, so now we've got this, right? We've got LED finish, uh, sleep for three seconds to let that, you know, make, give the user enough time to actually see the LED and we kill and grab, we turn the LED off and we halt the system and That's halt will take of care of stuff that happens. Uh, we could probably just put all of that into a single function called run yeah. so we want to update that it's a little cleaner um well the, yeah i mean in the end all of this here is part of the one function right so we could absolutely just call a uh, function run and then just move this into including the end grab move, move all of that into this run function yeah, then, and then, then what happens when you start this up is it does setup, sync, run. Yeah. All right. So uh, setup, sync, run. Um, so funnily enough, as we're doing an ngrep payload here, your check log uh, function, basically all it needs to do is grep the word user or the word pass out of the log file. Right. So. <laughs> so there's there's a couple of ways to do this, and and again we've discussed this before. But the the I think the best way to test is is twofold, right? So the first one is we can do uh, checking based on certain output if it's predictable output, you know, pass for example, or we can check by has the log actually been you know because the log already grips only relevant things from the network, right? So technically, if there is anything in the log, we're expecting oh, it to be 
they should be loot, right? So we can do both. We can do a hybrid of both. So um, for that, uh, what I would do is uh, we would first have something like a like a condition up here. Condition, and this condition would be uh, let's leave that blank for now, um, and then let's check in our check log function. Uh, so that's going to say if it exists. Yeah. So if if this is uh, if this is set or uh, well, if it's not empty anyway. If it's not empty. Um, yeah, it's not zero. Uh, then we want to run uh, the grep code. Otherwise, we want to run a different type of code. And we're just going to leave return one here because return one just is the error condition. We didn't find anything, right? So we can just leave that here. Uh, we can return. So right. the first one's kind of obvious. We just grep it for whatever, in this case, that condition variable. And I see what you did there. We're going to say, I don't know, um, user or pass in that condition. And for our case, right. that will work fine. But for somebody yeah, else, if they want to change the ngrep options, they might be looking for a different condition. Right, exactly. And I just did Q because we don't need, you know, this can be run quiet. We don't need that. And then the I is just for case and sensitivity, just in case you want to have your condition be case and sensitive. If you don't want that, you'd have to take out this I and we can get into making that switchable later too. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so this will, this will do for now. And what we can do here is we can just do return uh, zero, and then we know that uh, you know uh, the log contains that it the found it. condition. Yeah. All right. Um, and at the same time, here what we can do is we can do a different uh, check, and that would be word count dash l. Uh, we that give an file? input file just so that we don't have to do any awk. So we just pipe uh, into standard in, and we do log file. So we have this. So we know that from when we ran this as a proof of concept that the, that it had a couple of lines saying like, hey, I'm running against port 21, yada, 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 the filter and the match. Right. Yeah. So so what we're doing now is we're basically just, just running. Um, sorry, uh, you were saying filter and the match? Yeah. So the first, so what I'm saying is when we ran it as a uh, proof of concept, just to see if this yeah. works, um, basically you could see that um, it, uh, well, it, it told you what it's doing, you know? So like the first two lines, in fact, the first three lines, if I uh, switch back over to uh, of the my end screen, yes, sorry. yeah, is, um, you know, it says, Hey, the interface is at zero and your filter is you're looking for this and, you know, here's your matching. So we know it's yeah. going to be that WC means word count and tack L says lines. So one, two, three lines already. So we know that that's going to exist, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's a really good point though. So we discovered that with our filter, it's three lines long. Now there is a possibility that when you change these things, it's, uh, uh, this number could be different. So let's actually do something like, uh, like to find this variable here, we should obviously add comments, but, uh, word count num equals three and make sure to actually give this a, Give that a sign. dollar sign. There we go. Yeah. So now what we're doing is we're checking that the word count is greater than or minimum number. So this way we know that something has been added to the file. We set it to three by default, and we leave this condition empty because well, we could check for what is a pass or something. It like would that. be pass, but you know what? Let's just yeah. let's go with this. I like this. If it's longer than three lines, you know, because we know yeah. that our match and filter and interface are going to be three lines. Yeah. And so then, then again, here, we're just going to return zero because it's greater than the, the or, or minimum number and, uh, and we just return zero and otherwise we return one. So that's, that's all we need to do here. Um, I think that that pretty much covers the, uh, the majority of the payload, unless we want to get fancier with, uh, with any of this logic or want to keep it running on a variable and so on. But this is your basic ngrep payload, I would say. That is hot. I, I think that's, uh, I think at this point, I've gone ahead and uh, if you save that, I'll copy it over to my packet squirrel. Yeah. Let me just send you that. And uh, basically, let's just go ahead and uh, fire this guy up and, and take a look. So. Um, it's in arming mode. Uh, the payload is now assigned to switch position one and plug in the power and then we wait. 
And that's that's pretty much it. So at this point, I would like plant it with a little bit of double-sided sticky tape, maybe stick on a little label with the HVAC company logo or whatever have you on your pen test. You know what I keep seeing now is people saying uh, naming or devices humidity sensors. So uh, like a land turtle or a packet squirrel uh, labeled humidity sensor and then just stuck to the side of something like do not unplug humidity sensor and it looks great. And it uh, honestly passes as a humidity sensor for people that don't realize what it is. Yeah. I mean, I saw one of these photos on Twitter and I, I'd, I'd be buying it. Yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not going to be that jackass that unplugs oh, the humidity God, no. sensor. <laughs> imagine, 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 you know, a data center, right. And your temperature levels are, are like, it gets too hot or too humid or, or too whatnot. Right. Imagine, uh, the amount of trouble you'd get in for unplugging one by accident. So, and there we go. It's gone asleep, right? If you can see Excellent. that. Yes. So at this point I should just be able to press the button and say, Hey, I don't have any loot, right? No loot. Sad. That's, looks good. Okay. Well, let me, but now we know. let me make sure we get some loot by FTPing in. Okay. I've logged into the FTP. So now if we press the button. Haha. -ha. There we go. At and this working. point, at this point, I could just unplug it and run off with all the loot. You know what, Seb? It just occurred to me. We should leave it running. We should add another condition where I can just pull the USB drive, plug another one in, start storing even more loot. Now go back to my laptop and check it out, analyze, see what I got. Huh? Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Maybe next time. Maybe next but time. What did we... What do we do now that we have a payload that's ready to go? Uh, it would probably be best to contribute this um, to the greater packet squirrel community, right? Absolutely. And uh, the best way to do that is by submitting it to our uh, packet squirrel payloads repository on GitHub. Um, maybe you can walk us through quickly how to, how to do that or how to send a pull request. All right. Well, I have my payload.sh here. I should probably also create a readme.md, which should just say, I don't know, ngrep payload. And then we'll say, like, description does packet sniffing stuff. You know, I should probably make this a little bit prettier later uh, with all of the different options. Yeah, which were, you know, what, like um, WC, what was it, W count, all of the different variables and such. But yeah. uh, well, I'll go ahead and pretty that up later. But we'll say, okay, cool, I've got a readme MD. And here's a fun one. I'm actually in Windows right now. And if I DIR instead of LS, you can see I've got those. And if I do a start dot, that opens up Explorer for me, which you can't see right now, but believe me, it's there. And at that point, I have a folder that contains the two files that are necessary, my payload.sh and my readme.md. And I have already cloned uh, the packet squirrel repository over to um, my own personal GitHub account, which is great. You mean I've, forked, forked I've forked it. I've forked it over to my account, which means I can now go ahead and commit this to my repository and then send a pull request to Hack5 so that everyone within the packet squirrel community can benefit from this and it's literally drag and drop so i'll just go ahead and share this uh chrome browser window that i've got open uh and can do this from and what i can do is go into this is my version of it you can see it's hack5 darren slash packet squirrel there i'll go over to payloads and library and where are we going to put this i'll put this under sniffing so right here sniffing and i'm just going to drag and drop my folder there we are. There are the files. We're going to call this um, first version. Let's see, added ngrep payload. Some packet sniffing with ngrep and commit changes. There we go. And aha, I'm ready to go ahead and commit this over, right? Yep. Looks like it. Okay. Um, so I so just click on that pull request. request. Everything's able to merge. Everything's done for me. Just click create pull request. That looks good. Create pull request. And there we are. And now I Perfect. just wait for someone to come along and say, hey, that looks awesome. We could all benefit from that sweet payload. And now other contributors can come in and make it better.
Like yeah, absolutely. the thing I was talking about, about unplugging, replugging a USB drive and getting even more packets. Yeah. So not only is this something um, that that is a way for you to contribute to us, but we can also give you direct feedback in the pull request and ask for a couple of changes or improvements or someone else can chime in and do the same thing. And then we can, can merge all that when it's ready. That's really exciting. You know, I love the way that this is blossoming and building on so many of the lessons learned, not only just from like, you know, the hardware of say their most, our more recent uh, device, the Bash Bunny, in terms of the way that we store payloads and run payloads and assign, you know, switch positions and LEDs and such, right. but also in the uh, amazing community that has blossomed around that. And I'm so excited to be contributing another payload to that repository. So we hope that you will as well. And if you're a Packet Squirrel user, now you know, you can go and nab all sorts of new payloads over at uh, our Git repository, which currently is at github.com slash hack5 slash Packet Squirrel dash payloads. Yep. Seb, where can people badger you online? Uh, the best place is usually forums.hack5.org. Um, that's the, the place to, to, to go for, for pretty much any of your questions. But if there's something specific to development, you can always email developer at hack5.org. Um, awesome. Come directly to me and we'll be able to take care of anything. And of course, you can tweet those sweet packet squirrel and other Hack5 Gear tweets with the hashtag Hack5 Gear all through now through November 20th, I believe. Uh, there's still contests going on at hack5.org slash contest. Hack5.org is the place to find all of the other shows, including Metasploit Minute and Threatwire and Tech Thing and Hack Tip and, uh, and more of this. I hope that we continue, Seb, doing some more Let's Codes. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, it worked really well across the pond. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. This is one where I'm really keen on your feedback as well. So feedback at hack5.org or just comment below and we'll be there. Uh, so until next week, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Sebastian Kidden. Trust your technolust. If you've got a great idea, you should do what Shannon and I do and head over to domain.com and register your domain. Bring it over to the internet using this super awesome discovery system that brings domains from your mind onto the web over at domain.com. They've got a quick and easy checkout process and they've been supporting Hack5 for years. You can also tweet at them at domain.com and say, hey, thanks for hooking up the guys and they've got a special treat just for you. You get to save 20% off at checkout over at domain.com using the super secret coupon code. It's H-A-K-5. It spells Hack5 and it's just between you and I, all right? Don't tell anyone. Okay, you can tell people. When you think domain names, think domain.com. Dum dum tick tick dum dum tick tick dum dum tick tick dum. Okay.